What if I told you that some of today's most advanced military technology started out as simple wooden weapons thousands of years ago? Weapons so clever, they shaped the future of warfare, yet most people have never heard of them. And the fourth weapon on this list became the foundation for today's carbon fiber technology, body armor, and even helicopter blades. But before we get there, let's start with a weapon that ancient warriors used as the original sniper rifle. Weapon 1. The Ballista. The year is 400 BC. You're defending a city wall when you see it. A weapon so terrifying that grown warriors freeze in place. But here's the thing. This wasn't just any siege weapon. The Greeks had created something that would change warfare forever. They called it the Ballista. Imagine a crossbow. Now multiply its size by 50. Now give it the power to launch a 60-pound stone through three feet of solid wall. But wait, that's not even the craziest part. This machine could hit a single soldier from 500 yards away. Think about that. In an age of swords and spears, someone built a sniper rifle out of wood and rope. The secret? Torsion springs made from animal sinew. When you twisted these bundles, they stored energy like a coiled snake. Release them, and bang, your projectile flies faster than any arrow. Here's where it gets interesting. Roman engineers took one look at this design and became obsessed. They didn't just copy it. They perfected it. They added precision gears, adjustable frames, even rangefinding tools. By 50 AD, Roman ballistae were so accurate, operators had kill counts like modern snipers. But the Romans discovered something unexpected. The torsion principle wasn't just good for weapons. Fast forward to today. Every time you see a torsion bar suspension on a tank or military vehicle, you're looking at the ballista's DNA. That Abrams tank? Its suspension system uses the exact same principle those ancient engineers discovered. Twisted metal bars storing energy to absorb shock. And that's just the beginning. The ballista's targeting system, with its precise angle adjustments and range calculations, became the blueprint for modern artillery. Every howitzer, every mortar, Every rocket launcher uses the mathematical principles first worked out by sweating engineers on ancient battlefields. But if you think launching rocks through walls was impressive, wait until you hear what ancient warriors did with a simple piece of rope and leather. Weapon 2. The Sling. Picture this. You're a Roman soldier in full armor. Suddenly, something hits your helmet so hard it dents the metal and knocks you unconscious. You never even saw who threw it. The weapon? A sling. Two strings and a leather pouch. That's it. Total cost? Maybe five minutes of work. But here's what nobody tells you about slings. Archaeological evidence shows sling bullets reaching speeds of 100 miles per hour. We're talking about ancient warriors throwing fastballs that would make MLB pitchers jealous. These weren't pebbles. These were specially crafted lead bullets, aerodynamically shaped, sometimes inscribed with messages like catch or O-U-C-H. The Romans found sling bullets with four Pompey's backside written on them. Ancient trash talk, delivered at lethal velocity. Now here's the mind-blowing part. Slingers could outtrain archers. Let that sink in. A piece of rope could shoot farther than a bow and arrow. Balearic slingers were so feared that Roman generals would specifically request them as mercenaries. These guys trained from childhood, developing a technique that modern scientists still can't fully replicate. The secret was in the spin. When you will a sling, you create angular momentum. Release at the perfect moment, and physics takes over. The projectile doesn't just fly, it spins, creating stability like a rifle bullet. Wait, did I just say rifle bullet? That's not a coincidence. The entire concept of rifling, those spiral grooves inside gun barrels, came from studying how sling bullets flew. Medieval engineers noticed that sling stones naturally spun in flight, making them more accurate. When firearms were invented, they literally carved spirals into barrels to recreate what slingers had been doing for millennia. But it goes deeper. Modern military still uses sling principles. Those helicopter winch rescue systems? Same physics as a sling. Centrifugal force weapons? Sling mathematics. Even the way we calculate projectile trajectories in video games comes from equations first worked out for sling warfare. And get this. NASA uses sling dynamics for spacecraft. It's called a gravity assist or slingshot maneuver. 
We're literally slinging spaceships around planets using the same principle David used against Goliath. Speaking of momentum and physics, ancient warriors figured out something else that would revolutionize how we think about speed and protection. Before moving to the third weapon, if you like these documentaries please consider subscribing. It would just take you a single click but can make my day. Weapon 3. The Chariot. 3,500 years ago, a Hittite engineer had a problem. How do you make horses, which are already terrifying, even more terrifying? The answer changed civilization forever. The war chariot wasn't just a cart with horses. It was the F-22 fighter jet of the Bronze Age. And what made it deadly wasn't what you'd expect. Here's the thing that blew my mind. The wheels. Those wheels were engineering masterpieces. Spoked wheels, perfectly balanced, lightweight yet strong enough to carry armored warriors at 30 miles per hour across rough terrain. Do you understand how insane that is? They created Formula One technology using bronze tools and wood. Egyptian chariots weighed just 75 pounds. The entire vehicle. Modern mountain bikes weigh half that, and we have carbon fiber. But wait, it gets crazier. The suspension system. These weren't rigid boxes bouncing over rocks. Egyptian and Assyrian chariots had flexible platforms, leather straps, and bent wood frames that absorbed shock. They literally invented independent suspension 3,000 years before cars existed. The driver stood on woven leather, not solid wood, creating a natural shock absorber. When archaeologists tested replica chariots, they found the ride was smoother than early automobiles. Now here's what changes everything. The chariot didn't just inspire cars, it created the entire concept of mechanized warfare. Think about it. For the first time in history, you had a weapons platform that could move faster than infantry, carry supplies and weapons, provide mobile archery platforms, break enemy lines through shock tactics. Sound familiar? You're describing a tank. But here's the connection nobody talks about. When World War I started, cavalry was still the mobile strike force. But horses versus machine guns? Disaster! Engineers needed something with the mobility of cavalry but the protection of a fortress. What did they create? A metal box on tracks, literally an armored chariot. The first tanks even had crew positions based on chariot designs. Driver, gunner, commander. The exact same layout ancient warriors perfected. Modern armored personnel carriers? Chariots. Infantry fighting vehicles? Chariots with cannons. Even the Humvee follows design principles first established when someone thought, what if we put warriors on a fast-moving platform? And that's not even the wildest part. Formula One racing? The entire sport exists because of chariot racing. The Circus Maximus in Rome held 250,000 spectators watching chariots race. The Romans had racing teams with colors, reds, blues, greens, whites, just like modern racing teams. They had star drivers earning millions of sesterces, sponsorship deals, even hooligans fighting over their teams. NASCAR is literally modern chariot racing. Same oval tracks, same speed focus, same spectacular crashes that crowds secretly hope to see. But if you think putting weapons on wheels was innovative, wait until you hear about the weapon so advanced that modern militaries still can't improve on its basic design. Weapon 4. The Composite Bow. Genghis Khan conquered more land than any human in history. His secret weapon? A bow that was physically impossible. At least, that's what engineers thought. The Mongol composite bow could shoot an arrow 350 yards. English longbows, the weapon that dominated medieval Europe, maxed out at 250. But here's the kicker. The Mongol bow was half the size. How is that even possible? The secret was in the materials. But not the way you think. Mongol bowyers spent three years making a single bow. Three years. They'd lay a horn, sinew, and birchwood with glue made from fish bladders. Then they'd wrap it, let it cure, unwrap it, adjust it, wrap it again. For three years. The horn compressed when you drew the bow. The sinew stretched. The wood kept everything neutral. It was basically a spring made from animal parts, storing more energy per inch than any material until synthetic composites were invented. But here's what's insane. 
When modern scientists tested these bows with machines, they discovered something that shouldn't be possible. The bows got stronger over time. The more you used them, the better they performed. Modern materials degrade with use. These bows improved. The molecular structure of the sinew actually reorganized with repeated stress, creating stronger bonds. We didn't even know that was possible until we studied these ancient weapons. Now watch how this changes everything. The principle of the composite bow, different materials working together to create something stronger than any single component, revolutionized modern engineering. Carbon fiber? It's literally synthetic composite bow material. Those layers of carbon weave with resin? That's horn and sinew with modern materials. Every piece of body armor, every helicopter blade, every high-performance sports equipment uses the composite principle. But it goes even deeper. The recurve design, where the bow tips curve away from the archer, created a mechanical advantage we still use today. Compound bows, the most advanced bows on Earth, use the exact same principle Mongol engineers discovered. Store maximum energy in minimum space. Modern military crossbows used by special forces? Composite materials with recurve dynamics. Those tactical bows that fold up for transport? Mongol horse bows did that first. And here's the thing that breaks my brain. The Mongol thumb ring draw technique was so efficient that Olympic archers started adopting it in the 1990s. A technique from the 1200s is improving Olympic records today. But if you want to talk about an ancient weapon that was literally 2000 years ahead of its time, you need to hear about the most insane military device ever built with rope and wood. Weapon 5. The Claw of Archimedes. The Roman fleet approached Syracuse Harbor. 60 warships. Unstoppable. Then something reached out from the city walls and picked up a ship. A whole ship. Lifted it out of the water like a toy. This actually happened. 213 BC. The Romans thought the defenders of Syracuse had summoned sea monsters. But it wasn't magic. It was mathematics. Archimedes had built something that shouldn't have existed for another 2000 years. The claw was essentially a massive crane with grappling hooks. But calling it a crane is like calling a smartphone a calculator. This thing could grab a warship, we're talking 40 tons of wood and soldiers, lift it partially out of the water, and either capsize it or drop it from height. The physics alone should have been impossible. Without modern hydraulics, without engines, without steel cables, Archimedes created a machine that could generate enough force to lift a warship. How? Compound pulleys and counterweights. But not just any pulleys, he invented a system where each pulley multiplied force exponentially. Modern engineers who tried to recreate it needed three years just to figure out the mathematics. But here's what's absolutely insane. The claw wasn't remote controlled, but it acted like it was. Archimedes designed a system of ropes and signals where operators inside the walls could control the claw's movements without seeing the target directly. They used geometry and pre-calculated positions. He basically invented the principle of server mechanisms. In 213 BC. Now here's where your mind explodes. Every construction crane you see building skyscrapers? That's the claw's descendant. But it goes beyond that. The principle of mechanical advantage through pulley systems that Archimedes perfected? That's in every elevator, every ski lift, every cable car system on Earth. Ship-mounted cranes that load cargo containers? They're using Archimedes' leverage calculations. Those massive grappling systems that salvage sunken ships? Direct evolution of the claw. But wait, there's more. The robotic arms on the International Space Station use the exact same principles as the claw of Archimedes. Grappling, lifting, precisely moving massive objects in three-dimensional space. NASA engineers literally study Archimedes' designs for inspiration. Modern military applications? The arresting gear on aircraft carriers, those cables that catch landing jets, use the claw's principles of controlled deceleration through mechanical advantage. And here's the kicker that nobody talks about. The claw of Archimedes proved something that changed engineering forever. With the right mechanical advantage, there's no limit to what humans can lift. That principle? It's why we have tower cranes that can lift 20 tons to heights of 1,000 feet. It's why we can build bridges across impossible spans. It's why we went from pyramids to skyscrapers. 
One wooden claw in ancient Syracuse proved that physics beats muscle every single time. These five weapons didn't just win ancient battles, they wrote the blueprint for modern technology. From the ballista's torsion bars in today's tanks, to the sling's physics in NASA missions, to the chariot becoming the tank, to composite bows inspiring carbon fiber, to Archimedes' claw-lifting skyscrapers into existence. The next time you see modern military tech, remember, some ancient engineer probably thought of it first. They just used wood instead of metal. If you want more ancient tech that changed the world, subscribe below.